Hey folks, well, season two of Alone is over. And so now I can talk about it a little more freely than what I was able to before. The producers only have so much time. They have, uh, yeah, only so much time. So they can't show all the projects that we did out there. I do wish they would have shown more projects and maybe a little less of the drama, but I mean, it's a TV show and, and it is what it is. So I'm going to, with, with as many days as I spent out there, I did a lot of different things. So that gave me a lot of material for my channel. So I'm going to be doing a lot of different videos on my experiences out there in, out there in Vancouver Island. I'm going to be doing um, the equipment and how well it worked or didn't work, my clothes, how well they worked or didn't work, and then I'm going to be showing some of the projects that they either showed or they um, just glossed over very quickly. And the first one is a crab trap that I made. It was a crab slash fish slash whatever the heck I could catch in it. So let me get the camera set up and I'll show you what I made. Okay, so when I was out there, um, when I was making my bed, I had a lot of hemlock and cedar in my area. I didn't have any, I had some spruce and, um, yeah, some spruce, but they were huge, huge trees, like big trees like this that I didn't want to cut down. And with a spruce bough, it's shaped kind of in a circle with needles spread all over the place and it helps fluff your bed pretty nice. With hemlock and cedar, they're a flat needled and they're, they're very flat so it takes a lot of boughs and you have to get a lot of branches to finally get the six inches, eight inches, whatever that you need of insulating value up above your, you know, the, to, to lay your bed on. So I had harvested a lot of cedar for my boughs and so I had a lot of twigs left over and at my second area I wasn't catching a lot of fish on my on my lines I wasn't it was very you know maybe once a week at the most and then towards the end it, they just dropped off <clears throat> so one of the things that I tried to do was make a fish or crab trap type deal I had all these boughs laying around and by that time I had found some cordage I even found a little bit of a net. You see right here, it's a pretty deteriorated net. And this cordage here, I found, this is what I made when I first got to my new area. This is what I uh, tore apart. It was a, a braided line, so to speak. In other words, it wasn't twisted, so it was actually pretty difficult to take apart. I had to undo all the strands. It was really a pain. And this type of cordage, you can see it just, well, it just collects all sorts of crap. But anyway, I went ahead and made, and you can see some of the stuff starting to come apart, but I made a funnel for a fish or crab trap type deal. You also saw a bucket that I found out there. And what I did with this bucket is I took my knife and I punctured and made holes about every four inches or so in this bucket, okay? And then I also put a hole in the very bottom of the bucket. Like I said, I'm going to be doing videos on the modifications or how well my, my clothes worked and stuff. But anyway, I had some material left that I had cut out of my rain jacket. And I'll explain that in another video. But I had some nylon type material that I had. So I punctured a hole in the bottom of it. And I ran a piece of cordage up through the bottom so that I could hold on to it so that I could reach my hand in here and pull it up and I put that nylon right here and put mouse guts in it and fish guts and all sorts of stuff and tied it and then the other end of the cordage was at the back of the bucket here Okay, so there's a piece of cordage running through the bucket up through the funnel to right here like I said I tied my guts and stuff in there, and then I had my, my string, and I was able to pull that inside the bucket, okay? And with all those little holes around the outside, I took a piece of cordage, and I lashed this funnel to this bucket. So when it was all said and done, I had my fish trap here, 
and the funnel going in there. And this is starting to come apart and some of it got lost in the shipping I think. But I also had some cordage wrapped around this funnel here so I could decrease the size or increase the size of this particular hole that the fish swam in. So this was all one piece and then with that cordage that I had, this stuff right here, you can see here's a splice right here. I had, I think they were approximately 12 foot lengths. Uh, one, of the, one of the pieces of cordage was, of this cordage was approximately 12 feet long. And after I got done braiding it, I obviously had 36 feet or so of it, and I spliced it together. And I tied it real good so that it was around my funnel part and around my bucket part. And I put some rocks in the bottom of this bucket, tied this string to this bucket and this funnel, and I threw it out into the ocean. One of the scenes, I can't remember if it was in episode 10, 11, or 12, whatever, there is a shot of the, my point, one of my points of my cove. And if you look careful, you can see a cedar branch hanging over the point, and you can see a white line going down it. Well, that was my fish trap. I had, like I said, put some rocks in there, and I would take it and I would just chuck it out there as far as I could, and I tied it off really good to that cedar limb, and then I would come back and check it. Now the big question is, did it work? I caught a couple of small crabs in it, and these types of crabs, I'm not an expert on crabs, <laughs> different types and stuff. Sometimes folks get a little too hung up on the names of certain things. You need to know the properties of things. Sure, with plants and stuff, if you're going to eat them, you definitely need to know them inside and out before you eat them. These crabs, I don't care. They're, they're food. They're meat. It doesn't matter. But anyway, the type of crab, I don't know if it was a... Um, I asked somebody what type they were, and they told me Dungeness, but I believe they were wrong. I don't, I don't know what kind they were, but they have a hard shell, a pretty hard shell. And the <clears throat> when you get a big one... They give you a lot of meat. When you get a small one, you can't eat the shell, and there's not a lot of meat inside there. But anyway, I got a couple of small crabs in there. I did eat them. It was a lot of work, probably more work than, than what it was worth almost. But at least I was able to pop the top off and eat the brains out, so it did give me a little bit of nourishment. I never caught a fish in this. I not only put in um, that stuff inside that nylon pouch type thing, but I also put bits of fish, uh, guts, and bits of things, so there was actually um, not just scent, but actual meat that they could latch onto. I tried, it didn't really work that well, and I tried in multiple locations, and I would let it soak for, you know, there was, I'd check it, and then I'd throw it back out there, and I'd check it again the next night, and then nothing in there. I'd throw it back out there, leave it for now two days maybe, check it after two days, maybe one little crab in there, whatever. No fish, but I tried, and that was my crab trap. All right, guys, more videos to come, and if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.